Hi there, and welcome to this web lecture on social psychology. Did you know that the field of social psychology is just over one century old? Do you know how social psychologists develop and test their theories? My name is Peter Ruiten, and today we will be talking about the mission and the method. This web lecture is divided in three different sections. In the first section, I will present a brief history of social psychology. After that, I will explain the importance of scientific theories. And finally, I will show how these theories can be tested by using different research designs. Let's start with a definition of social psychology. Social psychology can be defined as a scientific study of how people affect and are affected by others. And in the 1930s, there were two different approaches that were used to explain human behavior. The first approach was coined by Kurt Lewin. Kurt Lewin stated that human behavior is uh, a function of the person and the situation or environment in which this person finds themselves. And this can be summarized in the following formula. The other approach was coined by Golden Allport, and he focused on attitudes, stating that attitudes are the most important concept to understand human behavior. And when we put this into a formula, we can see that an attitude can be defined as the sum of all beliefs that people have about an object or behavior and the evaluations of those beliefs. In the 1950s and 60s, two different perspectives existed on how to explain human behavior. The first one is what we call behaviorism. Behaviorism is studying the observable actions that people show. In contrast to this, Freudian psychoanalysis focuses more on uh, trying to have an elaborate interpretation and experience of an event. The 1970s gave rise to social cognition. Um, and social cognition can be defined as how people think about others and social relationships. I will explain more about social cognition in web lecture number 5. And finally, since the 1990s, there has been an increase, uh, increased interest in biological explanations of human behavior. So uh, we can use evolution theory or uh, physiological measures to try to understand why people behave the way they do. These days, social psychologists believe that there are multiple ways through which we can understand why humans behave the way they do. And there are multiple ways to develop new scientific theories of human behavior. These theories are composed of unobservable constructs that are logically connected in a certain way and they can provide answers to why people do what they do. These theories often contain multiple constructs or variables. These variables can be independent or dependent. An independent variable is an event of which the values are created by an experimenter and is often outside the control of test subjects. We usually call this a manipulation. A dependent variable is any observable behavior or questionnaire response a person can provide. We usually call this a measure. A theory generally has a certain expectation about the relationship between an independent and a dependent variable. This expectation is what we call a hypothesis. Theories should always be tested against some observable behavior or other type of response. And we often do this by setting up a research with a specific design. These research designs could be either experimental or non-experimental. Let's first look at experimental studies. The first example of an experimental study is what we call a true experiment. In a true experiment, um, we manipulate different conditions and we randomly assign our participants to one of these conditions. In a quasi-experiment, we also have a manipulation, but uh, participants cannot be randomly assigned to one of the conditions. For example, when you investigate the differences in performance between uh, students in different schools. A third example of an experimental study is a field experiment. And in a field experiment, we try to collect our data in a real world environment. These experimental studies can have a number of different designs. And this is what we call experimental designs. This design can be either a within subjects design, in which participants experience all the levels of the independent variable, or a between subjects design, in which a participant experiences only one level of the independent variable. In addition to experimental studies, we also do non-experimental studies. And examples of these are correlational studies, in which we investigate a relationship between two or more variables. 
a meta-analysis where we combine the statistics of published results on a specific concept, or survey research where we ask people to fill in a questionnaire. Uh, two other constructs are important in the field of social psychology. And the first one of this is what we call validity. Validity refers to whether you actually measure the construct that you aim to measure. The second concept is reliability. Reliability refers to whether you get the same result uh, when you measure the same concept multiple times. And these two concepts together are important for us to generalize the results we find in our studies. Uh, so in sum, today I have given you a brief history of social psychology and we have seen that the field is just over 100 years old. I have explained to you the importance of scientific theories and I have shown you a number of different ways in which um, psychologists can study their theories in different research designs. That was all for today. Thank you for listening and hope to see you again soon.